I'm Sierra Henry. I'm the sports director at K-Texas Abilene, and you're watching Her Table. Now you see her. You are magnificent! Welcome to Her Table, the podcast that shines a spotlight on the badass women who are redefining the game. Join hosts Jade Foley and Megan Martinez as they unlock the secrets of success from the brightest female pioneers in the industry. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Her Table. We are podcasting from remote locations today. That's right, Megan. I'm in Phoenix. You're in the home studio in Cali. We have an amazing guest on today. Yeah, we, we did. On deck. Yep. We have Sierra Henry joining us today. She is an all-around athlete. She ran track and field and played basketball at in college. And then she also earned her degree in broadcast journalism from the University of Houston. She just recently moved to Abilene, Texas from the metropolis of Houston. She is the sports director for KTXS based in Abilene, Texas. She has worked on a lot of projects. I can't wait to get into it, Megan. I can't keep up with where she is today. Yeah, Sierra's been all over Texas, but she's also worked in a wide range of companies. She worked on ESPN's Mike and Mike. She went from there. Later on, went to work for HBCU's Go Sports. Love that. She's a mom of a beautiful little girl. So she is running the world a hero, both as an executive and a mom. I can't wait to dive into the story, bring her to the table, and let her share her path to sports director of KTXS. We're so excited to have you on today and share your story. Um, Okay, so right off the jump, you just made a huge move. You just left Houston, and you're now in Abilene. Yes, I did. Um, It was was a must-take job um, because... For, for especially for me in my career, because I've never worked at a station before. Um, so with all of the experience that I've have gotten on my own during freelancing, it landed me um, a sports director position. So it was like all the other roles that I were being um, offered were just reporter roles. And so I knew that this was like, OK, I have to take this. So here we are in West Texas. Nice. So tell us a little bit about your your journey and how you kind of got to where you are now. Well, I um, started off, I was a basketball player. Um, I went to the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Uh, that was my first uh, college and I went to play basketball there. Um, I followed a boy. Yes. <laughs> oh, you followed a boy. <laughs> oh, it was, um, he was playing football at the Air Force Academy, my high school sweetheart. Oh, uh, we did not get. I thought we were getting married. We not get married. Oh, um, but it was a good experience. I like passed up all these other. I was actually should have ran track in college. I was better at track. I turned down like deep one offers to like follow the love of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so, and um, okay, are you still with this man? I hope he looks at you and you get to say, look at me now. So, <laughs> so that's definitely been a thing. But um, we we are friends now. We were, we're still friends. But um, this did not work out. Uh, we were, you know, we were young. We were like 18. Yeah. Um, but um, I did meet so many amazing people in Colorado. Um, after that, I transferred to Tyler Junior College. Um, it's in Tyler, Texas. I played there under the amazing Trina Jones Tillis you know? Um, one of my favorite coaches that I've ever crossed paths with me and her is still like this, but, um, yes, played there for a year. And I really just figured out a lot about what I wanted in life. Um, at the time women weren't getting anything out of playing basketball. A lot of the women that were older than me that graduated are like, okay, I played basketball my whole four years. I don't, I can't get a job because I don't have experience. It's like, yeah, I got school paid for, but I can't really get a job because they don't care because I've, I've never worked. At the age of 22, most of the girls that play basketball have never had a job. Um, and that doesn't look good. They don't care that you play basketball for four years if you're trying to get a job there. So um, I was just kind of starting to think about what I wanted to do after basketball. I knew I didn't want to really go overseas. I don't like to be in places where I don't know what's going on. Um, it's fun for everybody. Yeah, people. you just moved to Abilene, Texas. So like the world has come full circle for you a little bit. It's the language. I feel like I'm okay with moving places in the States. Okay, Going fair enough, fair seas, enough. Like, and being over there for, like, elongated periods of time, just playing basketball, I just, 
it just didn't look like the life for me. <laughs> Uh, it's a commitment. Yeah. Like honestly, a lot of these these women that go play in the WNBA, like they're gone, you know, six seven months out of the year, and then they come back straight into WNBA season. So it just kind of is like a little bit of a hamster wheel, right? And that's exactly. and even for the guys, right, that go play internationally, it's you don't get to come back. I think that's one mistake people make a lot is they get to come back and they get to you're over there until your season's over exactly. and it's not back and forth. There's no time for it. So really exactly. it's like nine months. You're we'll not see on the other side. Exactly. Right. Right. And so I just, um, I just kind of analyzed things. And um, so I went, I transferred to the university of Houston and that's where my journalism career started. Um, I was always good at writing. So um, I was a business major and they make you take like a, um, I think I was a communications major and then they also made me take a business minor. But either way, yeah, I did that and um, got an internship with the athletics department and it just kind of took off from there. U of H was the host for the Super Bowl. They were the host for the men's final four, like those years that I was there. So um, we were like firsthand opportunities, anything that those teams or those events needed, they came to U of H to get the, the interns from our department. So it was kind of like, well, wow. once I was locked in with the university and doing my work there, it was like those opportunities came to me first. And I was always so grateful, still am very grateful for U of H for that because definitely was a start. That was the start for me. So. OK, I want to ask. So they always say, like, take all the opportunities. Right. And and don't turn them down for you at U of H. There's so many opportunities. Like, how do you how did you navigate which one you wanted to do, how you signed up for them and then ultimately how you got them? Because there's so many students going for the same, you know, role, small introductory role. How do you feel like you set yourself apart? So I I really had no idea what to even look for. Um, they didn't require us to actually go get an internship. So it was kind of a thing where like, if you wanted to do it, you would just do it. So I was like, I just was watching, I don't know, everybody else kind of do something. <laughs> like, I want to do something. So I just went to the, literally went to the uh, athletics department website and um, saw that they were hiring for interns. And I emailed them. Um, it was almost closing time. I emailed, uh, it was almost the closing time for them to stop accepting applications. And I was just like, dang, it was like literally like the weekend before. And I was like, they're not going to open this. And they weren't going to open it. So I just literally got dressed. And I don't know. I'm really not the type of person just barge in. I don't know what came over me. And I was like, I'm going to go up there and take my resume in person. Because I don't want to wait for them to, like, check their email. And then they never check it. And they're like, oh, hey, like, we could have used you. But I just now checked it five years later. Um, <laughs> so I just went in. And the the um his name is Rob Walden. He's one of my favorite people. Uh, he was a SID at U of H at the time, and I went in, and he was there, and he was just like, "Oh, just come in and talk to me." And they had an opening, and they gave it to me because he just liked that I just took initiative, and I had never done anything like that before. That was so totally not me. I so I don't want people to be like, "Oh my gosh, she's such a rock star!" Like, no, like I was scared out of my draws, like. <laughs> I like pulled up in the parking lot and I was like, should I go in here? Like everybody gonna be like, what is she going here? Like who who is she? Because the building is super intimidating, mind you. It's like right. an athletic building and it's full of all the coaches' office and all the important people. Like so, it's just kind of like you just walking in there. You need to know who you're looking for. Um, but I say that to also say is like even when you're so scared, like you just have to take that risk. Like because the worst thing they could do is say no. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's and even when opportunities started coming to me, there was a lot of things that I didn't get paid to do. And when it comes to that, I would say that um, definitely gauge like if it's going to benefit you or not. Um, you're not going to get paid for every you're not going to get monetary value for everything, but you might get value out of it because you're learning from this or, you know, this person, these people have all these guests or athletes around just whatever it you can get reps, whatever it is um, that you can find value in. You know, don't always think of it as monetary, but also, you know, don't let people use you up to death. For sure. Do you they feel like because you were an athlete, you kind of had that like tenacity, a little bit of like, OK, I just got to go get it. Like you, you have to just kind of show up and you're either prepared or not. And do you think that had anything to do with your success in that moment? 
I think so, um, for sure, because the athlete in me, like I wasn't always great at basketball and I went from not being great to being able to have a scholarship and being a part of multiple teams that were um, really good. So uh, just like I remember before, like not getting enough playing time. And I'm like, why am I? So I remember like getting up and going out and practicing on my own. Like nobody made me practice. Right. So it was because I was embarrassed to sit on the bench. So I was like, I got to change that. There's, I'm going to get out here and I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. And whenever my time comes, they're going to know like, oh, we should have been playing her. And so that's kind of how I look at a lot of stuff um, in life. Like, and it's still kind of with me now. It's like, if someone thinks I'm not good enough, well, I'm going to show them that I am good enough. And that comes with making yourself prepared, practicing, doing whatever it needs, you know, whatever it causes for you to do to like, I'm going to make them know. You will know my name. You will know my name. <laughs> I'm here for it. I love it. I think it's interesting to hear her talk, Megan, about how she was scared. Because I feel so many times as women, I wouldn't use it as feared. I think intimidation is like a good word mm -hmm. here in this space. We're like, I know I'm good enough. I know I should be here. But I don't have like the champion behind me giving me that validation. And so is that imposter syndrome? I think we go through a little bit. And even now in my career, I still experienced of like, am I supposed to be here? Like, is this for real? So, but to watch you take that, whether that's from basketball or even into journalism, you're now forward facing, you know, in a space that you are leading and championing. So you've kind of, and I love to see it, you've taken this and just grown and grown and grown, but you're being vulnerable and honest that it wasn't always like that it's people always say how did you get this confidence it's like it's like, um it's like, today <laughs> yeah like that's such a thing too it it's came like, with like <laughs> all of the the no's you know like and yeah. so you're yeah. like even now in this space like i still um like i'm still taking it all in they're like oh y'all picked me y'all wanted me to come and so now like even when i'm in the studio like my producers or the you know the people that work with me they're just always like um telling me like you did such a great job like oh my gosh like and I'm just like thank you but, you know it just feels good to finally be in a space where you're like they you know they appreciate your work um yeah and they respect it right I think that's one thing I wanted to dig in and I know Megan and I talk about this all the time is sometimes as women it's hard for us to champion ourselves because we feel like we're gloating and I actually the other day was uh on a podcast called she's got a goal in mind and they asked how do you have confidence do people call you bossy and out of nowhere my brain throws out like I don't consider myself bossy I just have leadership qualities like <laughs> it literally changed my mind because it's like that's so true. You literally have leadership qualities that they want to use to inspire, encourage, and put in a place that can lead. And oftentimes as women, we're told to shrink. And That's so you're scared to get outside the box. Do you find that that for you going from Houston to Abilene, it's a smaller um, geographic location. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've gone through that a little bit since you've made that change? into a smaller space or do you feel like it's been invigorating like it's you own it now it's been really pretty much of both um it's been a little like so like some coaches you know they may not be used to seeing um a woman coming to interview them like they're you're used to seeing guys and so I think that kind of struck a couple of coaches by surprise and some of their comments were like oh like I'm surprised you know what you're talking about um yeah. Stop. Stop well, it. I it as maybe he wanted to, he meant to give me a compliment. And you know, like as women, we're it's always, awkward. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to say. And so, um, you know, me, I'm kind of, well, you don't know, but I can tell you that I always pretty quick with comebacks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. So I was like, for it. <laughs> like, you know, that's why they sent me. Like, you know, it's kind of like, why would, you know, if there was a guy here mm -hmm. interviewing you, you would not have questioned his no. knowledge. You would not have been surprised that he knew what he was talking about. Um, so, but I, I don't really take those things. Um, I kind of take it as like, 
he thought he was going to insult me, but or thought maybe I wasn't going to be prepared. And maybe he's saying that. But I've obviously shown you that I am prepared. And so that's why I just kind of take it as a compliment, because it's like, yeah, you thought that I was going to come up here and ask you your favorite color. But I'm actually <laughs> asking you about why your defense is so horrible and why your quarterback got sacked eight times. I'm actually going to call you out. Like, we're let's just, Coach, pull up a chair. We're going to get real. Like, are you prepared for me? That's really how you should be looking at your life right now is, uh, are you prepared for the hard questions I'm going to ask you? It'll be, okay, so you have to report back when you see this coach again if the interaction's different. And I think one of the things, too, and Megan, I want to get your take on it from an NFL side is just mm-hmm. – how do you educate people on, I feel sometimes you're very, you're captivating, you're beautiful. You come in and people are like, wait, hold on. And you have to kind of break the wall down, but then you also have to like toe the line of like. Be nice too. Yeah, like, and, okay, I'm going to just let that roll on. How do you manage that as a professional setting? You know, you're still young in this industry, right? And you're gaining so much knowledge and experience. How do you take that and what do you do with it next? Me. You. That's yeah. Right. Exactly. yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I want to hear what Megan has to say. Yeah. Actually, Megan, you go. Megan, you're up. Come on, Megan. Megan's and she is just slaying over at NFL Network. I'm just, yeah. I know. Um, I know. It is. It's when you were telling me that story just about how, not on purpose, but that man and that coach that you're talking about in particular, like how, how he already kind of sees you like not knowledgeable and I feel like that is such a thing in the sports world and it's not like they do it on purpose but they just don't expect you to kind of like have those questions available have that information know that you're like you're doing your research before you ask your questions knowing that you like you're gonna be confident in your questions questioning too and I think for women I think it's so important to always you know come prepared always be ready to you know if they ask or if they say something complicated that you can kind of give it back, but you just have to know your stuff. And I think that's so important for women. You can't go in blind and being like, oh, hey, like like you said, like what's favorite color? Like you have, actually have to do your research, come up with good questions and then be confident in your delivery. So yeah, I guess from like an NFL perspective, it is very much so male dominated. And so that just makes you as a woman wanna be even better and like prove yourself. And it's, it's too bad that you have to do that because you're like, well, how come the males don't have to do that? But unfortunately, like, that's how it is. But that's okay. Like, that just means that you're going to be doing more work. You're going to work harder. You're going to be more determined and be able to kind of, like, execute those questions that you have. Absolutely. I think it forces you to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And so I can't complain. You know, like, it's kind of like a get or take thing, a bittersweet thing. Like, there's good and bad in both of it because it forces us as women to be so prepared because, I'm like, you ain't going to trip me up. Yep. <laughs> no. She said, not today. No. Because yeah, mm-hmm. then you have to. It's like, as soon as you you do, like, say, or you don't have the right information, that's the one moment they were waiting on to be like, oh. But, you know, so I take it with um with what it comes with. I'm, I'm glad they're putting the pressure so that I can be more prepared. I, I feel the same way. And I think something that's so special, I guess, um, with you – um, Sierra, I think that something that's really cool is that you've kind of taken the opportunities and, you know, the work that you've done and you've now turned it into something like Sports Bay. And I would love to hear more about that. So Sports Bay, that came from like, I, I have a lot of friends, I'm sure you do, who don't know a thing about sports. Oh, yeah. They don't know <laughs> if they are offense or defense, they couldn't tell you. So um, I would always be going like, you know, go out with uh, get invited to like watch parties and stuff. And like, of course, I'm going to bring a friend or something and they would never know what's going on. And I'm always like explaining to them like, OK, girl, this will happen. <laughs> and so one of my friends literally was like, girl, you should write a book. And I never really like took it serious. I was like, oh, that would be cool. Like, so I kind of had ideas floating around. But when COVID came, obviously, we were all just chilling. And so uh, that's when I was able to actually produce Sports Bay. Um, It was a book and I was writing it at first and I didn't even have a name for it. So I was just writing out like rules. And like one day, I don't even know, like I wish I knew the thought process of how it popped into my head, but I don't. But (laughs) (laughs) and it was Sports Bay. And so after Sports Bay, it was kind of like now it's a brand. It's more so for like, you know, um, 
just events, like networking events. Like I just want to be like a help to other women, athletes, like girl athletes, like just people in this space. Like I've even started like mentoring high school athletes who are trying to get like a scholar, a scholar, a scholar, scholarship, athletic scholarship. <laughs> and um, I've just been like just trying to help navigate like those students through the process because I know it was hard when I was in high school. So it's just a platform that, you know, for sports athletes, student athletes, women in sports, like it's kind of just a just a lifestyle now. It's interesting because like that's kind of how her table came about, right? It's like everyone, I, I, you'll, you can appreciate this. Everyone always looks at women, I feel like, and they're like, I want to be her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, who is her and how did she become her and what does it take to be her? Right. And really give a space to like a name and a job and a path and a story as opposed to just being like, oh, you know, the girl. I think it's so easy, especially in male sports to throw around like the girl over there or that girl over there instead of like, learn my name. Right. I have co coach. I have to learn your name. I can't walk in there and just be like, you know, the guy over there on offense, right? Like, you right. Know, it's a respect thing. And I think oftentimes men don't take the initiative. So I'm always like, okay, let's, I'm, we're going to introduce ourselves, say hi, right? And then that way there's zero excuse for it. And it's setting the tone, not for me, but for the next me, right? right. Like I'm not, it's not going to change for me in that moment because it just can't. Mm -hmm. But the next girl or the next young lady or woman that they meet or interact with, I'm hopeful to change her experience because right. mine was less than optimal, right? And I think that's the like responsibility I hear from you and like the internship and just mentoring is I didn't have that either. Like I didn't wake up and want to be an NBA agent. This wasn't like some dream that just came to me in the night, but there, because there wasn't a path before. Right. And so I think when you can sit here and say like, okay, there wasn't, but I want there to be that's the whole purpose of of all of this. And so you have a young daughter now. A little mini me, a little mini me, a little mini you. <laughs> how for you do you balance, you know, oftentimes as a mom, I get the how do you balance? I'm like, that you you don't. How do you find time to stay Sierra? Because oh. that's the challenge I have is how do I stay Kate? Not really just <laughs> I do. Um, a lot of the stuff that's work related, if she can be around or come, I make sure she can or is. Um, I just show her like what I do if I'm on the lap, if I'm on my computer, like she'll just come and sit next to me and set. She has like a little desk that she'll set up and sit right next to me and play on her computer. Um, <clears throat> so I, 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 love. Like, I have like so pictures cute. of her, like she has like her headphones on, like. She's like, I, I, it looks like she's doing a podcast, actually. So <laughs> it's just so cute. Like she's just kind of so time. amazing. So I kind of make time by by putting it together, um, you know. And I don't know, maybe one day she'll be like me. Like literally, she's, I just told you earlier, like she's outside playing playing defense on her boy cousin with a dress on, like <laughs> playing basketball defense. And I'm just kind of like, girl, you are so me. And I don't know. We just, you know, as mothers, I feel like we're uh, women in this sports world and also mothers that are in the sports world. We're super superheroes, honestly. Um, we just get it done and we make time for it. I don't know exactly how I do it, but I do. Um, her dad is super supportive. I can say that um, he makes it possible for me to be able to, um, you know, go out and do the things that I do. And he's he's always right there to be wrapped around his daughter's finger. Oh, so. I love it. I can't <laughs> wait. I, I want to see her. My my kids are scared. It's really loud inside. So they're like, it's too much. So I, I, I try and I'm trying. I'm not cool either. So maybe one day I'll get to the <laughs> I, cool I can't believe that. You're like going to I, NBA court. It's like, how do your kids not think you're so cool? Like, like no, you? I'm just embarrassing. Honestly, <laughs> I think it's like you're, you know, all their friends think it's cool. And then it's weird mm -hmm. to hear them talk about some, your mom. So it's like, <laughs> oh. Do you have oh. sons or daughter? You have a daughter. I have I have two boys and a girl. Oh, okay. So the so, boys, I know I know what it is. All their friends think you're hot. <laughs> That's what I think too. <laughs> That's and they're the like, actual I'm, truth. I'm looking at my mama. One hundred percent. Do you 
<laughs> do you know how weird she is? She's like dancing in Trader Joe's <laughs> yesterday, just embarrassing them because I can. It's totally fine. <laughs> okay, so you did something I think is so magical, and I want to hear how this came. You created an internship at Texas Southern, correct? Yeah. And it's still like implemented. So tell walk us through that journey of like, okay, I want to start this, and then it just took off, or did you start it after you left? How did that start? So when I went there, um, I went there for grad school. Um, I got my undergrad at U of H and then I went across the street to Texas Southern to get my master's. And I went there because I wasn't going to be required to take the GRE, which was great for me because I had felt like I needed to take it um, because I was going for radio, television, film. So it's money in my pocket. Anyways, go over there. Um, I'm in there and the I also start working at the athletic department at Texas Southern. And because Texas Southern is an HBCU, um, I had never even knew what an HBCU was before I went to um, before I went to college. Like in high school, I had no idea what it was at all. Like it just became a thing to me. And so I kind of was like, gosh, like these student athletes don't know about the HBCUs. And like at, at a point in time, there was like the whole HBCU versus PWI thing. And so my thing was to like go to this HBCU and and bring it up to par um, communications wise as far as like how U of H was. So a lot of the things that I learned in that department, I wanted to like apply them to the department at Texas Southern. They were they're a basketball program that goes to the dance every year and they don't even they at the time they didn't have as much as bios on their website. That's so unacceptable and a lot of times like schools were like oh well we don't have as much money as u of h and i'm like well that doesn't take money it just takes effort um and so i literally just came over there and i was like asking the sid there was only one sid compared to the four at u of h so at hbcus the funding is you know less um than what it is at u of h and so they only had one person so i was like i told him i was like we can get interns you know they have interns over there we should have interns over here so for sure it wasn't honestly like i just came up with this grand idea it was more so because like we literally needed it Mm -hmm. like there was one sid to the like 16 sports and i was like how um so we got interns and i just kind of um because of my i guess My reputation from U of H, a lot of some of the kids that worked in sports knew who I was. So once I, um, you know, it was out there that I was a grad assistant in Texas Southern, we're looking for student interns. They all just kind of like, oh, well, come. So we got a couple, um, got like five or six good ones and they stuck around for the year. And the guy, his name is Isaiah. He's still there. Um, He was there under me. He's still there now. And he has a lot of students working with him. And so... Wow. Yeah, it just kind of worked out. We were able to just put, you know, put the different students on different teams and like, hey, you're going to cover this team. You're going to go shoot the games for soccer. You're going to go shoot the games for volleyball. So we just, you know, delegating it out like, but they just didn't have that there. And it wasn't really like, like I said, it wasn't a grand idea. It was just kind of like they needed it. And they just needed someone with like a vision to say like, we should Mm -hmm. be doing this. It's okay to do this and then to do it. How does that make you feel though? That's gotta be so just like heartwarming and fulfilling to watch these young men and women be a part of a program that you built and then go on to find success. I would argue to say probably because of the program you put in place gave them that opportunity to do that. How does that make, like, Sierra, makes- come on! <laughs> Changing lives and shit around here. Like <laughs> it makes me feel good because, you know, obviously they didn't have that before. And I don't know, like the guys that are that every time I see like the guy, his name is Isaiah, he actually always calls me if there's ever anything like TSU needs. Like I was the arena host for their basketball season, like I think a year and a half ago, or maybe it was a year ago. I don't know. <laughs> but he like always calls me. I call him my agent. And so it's kind of like he was somebody who once worked worked under me but he's also somebody who now like if he hears of something that he knows I'm qualified for he helps get me jobs so that was always like super cool so I see it as like I'm super glad that I was able to help create a path for them but I'm also super glad that I was able to do that for these people that are making their own way and they can also help me too they're now colleagues of mine that I'm like hey like 
I love you know, that. so it's just, yeah. you never know where the people that you meet or help or mentor over the time, like you never know where they're going to end up and where they can end up helping you one day. Yeah. And so, I say that all the time, like the sports world is so small. It is. And it is. for me, I find how you treat people is so indicative to me of how you're going to move when I'm not around. And so I always tell these young people when I talk to them, it's like, you never know who you're sitting next to in this class, where they're going to end up, who is on this group project with you, who's on the elevator with you as you go to meet somebody. Like, you just don't know. And then it happens and you're like, like what you're saying is you have people who you've helped come through this program that are now your colleagues. Like it, you can't predict it. And so you have to be just a good person. Like you can't be cool. I was just feeling like I literally only went to grad school because I was trying to get an internship at a news station. That was the only thing that I had not ever done was step foot in a news station. And I really, really wanted, you know, they only offered the internship to students. Meanwhile, I never got the internship. Um, well, <laughs> so me, I like, I'm making internships over here, people. Yeah. I'm creating them and I'm not getting it. Like, so I was like, try, but I was trying to get one at the news station at a, you know, local news station. Mm -hmm. And in Houston, obviously, you know, it's super competitive. Um, so I just never got it. But, and I was always just kind of like, dang, like, why can't I get this stuff? Why can't I get this stuff? But now looking back, it's like those things just weren't for me. And mm -hmm. now these things are. And, you know, the people that I helped along the way are able to help me. It's just, yeah. you just, you always probably ought to ask like, oh my gosh, why can't I get this? Why isn't this for me? Just trust the process. Oh, absolutely. It's so yeah. hard to do that though. <laughs> like it is so hard because you want to be like, why them, not me? Like, and it's, throughout my career I've even struggled too of like because you're in a people world right you're in a relationship world it's not necessarily who's the best and the most capable it's who yeah. works who doesn't what are you mm -hmm. giving what do they need kind of thing and it's right. hard to like I, I try to remind myself Aaron we had a guest Aaron Monfrey and she talked a lot about how like you know what's for you will find you and what's for you won't pass you mm -hmm. like if it's not for you in that moment just trust that mm -hmm. it will work out better or come back around and it's i think for these young people especially young women i feel like they get really discouraged easy and it's like why didn't i get this what did i do wrong and then that spirals that imposter syndrome cool. of like okay i have to change who i am and i went through that in my career where i would try and adapt who i was for the room i was in and i still wouldn't win and I'm like, well, if I'm not good enough as me, but I'm not good enough as this version of me, like, who who am I? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> and that's where you just have to say, like, it's okay. Like, it's it's. I see them get discouraged, and I'm like, don't worry. Like, that's just not for you. Yeah, but it's not easy hard. to take that as a yeah. young Kate. Young Kate would not take that. I know young <laughs> Megan would not take nope. that. No, I think they, <laughs> they wants, yeah. um, and we talk about this a lot with a lot of athletes because of the portal now too. Um, they want instant yeah. gratification mm -hmm. and they're like, you know, especially for the athletes, they're like, oh, if I come here and I'm not getting playing time, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go in the portal. I'm going to find me somewhere else to go. Whereas back in my day, <laughs> it was like, you know what? I'm going to work harder. I'm going to get in here in the gym tonight at midnight and I'm going to take her spot. It's not like I'm going to go just go somewhere else. And so it's like that across the board with a lot of stuff. Like I have a little sister who's 21. And she's so talented and I, she's an artist and I go through this with her all the time. I'm like, girl, like you just got to keep doing the paintings. You got to, you know, do, do the work. You got to trust. Them. It's okay. It's not going to happen overnight, but if you stay consistent, you're going to look back in like two or three years and like, like, wow, all that hard work paid off. And so mm -hmm. I just always say like, just, just trust the process. It took me, I've been trying to get a job at a news station literally since I started this which was eight years ago. Wow. And this is my first job at a new stage. Love it. So Never give up. <laughs> that was a lot of people are like, oh, like it took me three years to get a job yeah. out of college. It took me this. And I'm like, well, it took me an extra degree that I probably didn't need. And <laughs> <laughs> so, and I always say that to say like, you know, like you say, I'm not in a bragging, but I'm saying it to hopefully inspire somebody to be like, yeah. if they're like in their fifth year and they still haven't found what's for them, it's okay. There is still time. I love that. There and it's going to change. Like, I think that's the one thing that 
especially in sports, everybody sees like your chapter 10. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I, again, I want to I have that. But it's like, that's why I think sharing the struggles are so important because everybody sees the like highlight reel, really pretty images of like, yeah. this is the sexy, cool ballers, right? Yeah, right. no, no, it is not that. Yeah. So I want you to break down for me, like when you go to meet, like, do you drive yourself? Are you doing your own glam? Like, what is that like to be in the role you're in compared to what people might think that it is? So the role I'm in currently, I do do my own makeup. We're Looking fabulous. Looks snatched. I love it. It <laughs> looks amazing. Looking <laughs> glam slay. Okay. And, you know, if there's like bigger, there's like um, at some stations, you know, there has a makeup person in a makeup room, but I do feel like even for you guys, like um, Megan with NFL, I'm pretty sure like she probably does her own makeup at home. Maybe the makeup person touches it up when you get there Yeah, and they'll probably help you. But I think most of us pretty much would like do our own stuff at home and unless there's like a big event, you know somebody does your makeup but every day on the every day um i go to work um i don't drive my car to games you know we drive company if you work at a station or something most places you drive their car they reimburse you for gas but mostly just drive their car um so i go there um i don't really sometimes i go to work with rollers in my hair because i don't have to be on air until six so i go to work at two um Mm -hmm. for meetings you know we kind of have our strategy meetings we talk about two in the afternoon hold on two in the afternoon or two in the morning i'm going to need you to clarify that yeah (laughs) okay because i was like wait what so your girl (laughs) here is working 1 a.m call times for international so i was like i know i'm like (laughs) i'm a little lucky i work like the two so i do the six o'clock and ten o'clock news um so i'm literally i'll go in at two i'll prepare my story um get it in there get it into the system and just kind of chill and make, you know, work on things for the rest of the week with sports. Um, it's pretty much planned out, you know, your stories because you know what games you're going to cover, you know, what games are already happening that week. So it's pretty, I'm not going to say it's pretty easy, but it's a lot simpler than news because news, you have to go find your stories mm-hmm. where sports, they kind of come to you because it's like this game is happening tomorrow. That's the story. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and so, so, uh, what, what for you I, made you want to go into sports? Because there's the journalism that is regular news, there's national news, international news, and there's, you know, the sports desk. Have you worked in outside of sports and did you like it or did did you realize it was something that wasn't for you? Yeah, I, sports probably because I was an athlete, still am an athlete. Like I, I go play pickup sometimes. Yes. I, <laughs> I, I still got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And then with news, yes, I knew I, a lot of people, I thought I didn't want news, but there became, you know, maybe around that fifth, sixth year when I was kind of like, oh my gosh, well, maybe they're right. Maybe I should try a news job just to get my foot in the door. I did it for six months. Absolutely hated it. Um, Why? Why? What was, was it just hard or it was changing too much or emotionally? Was, I can't imagine emotionally. Mm-hmm. Emotionally, it was, like? it was a thing. Uh, one of my first stories to get sent out to, well, they tried to send me out to, I just begged to not go. It was my, it was like my first week. So I was like, no, thanks. Um, a kid drowned <laughs> and they wanted me to go cover that. And I had never even done news before so yeah. a death a kid death I was like no ma'am like I want me to go talk to the parents like I just mm-hmm. couldn't imagine myself doing that and then just moving forward a lot of the stories it was just hard for me to find connection in the news stories I'm such a sports girl grew up on my whole life playing sports I'm an AAU kid summer track like I'm doing all, I'm I'm doing all the sports just to not be at home I ran from <laughs> And I sucked, <laughs> but I ran cross country just so I could like be doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just always want to be. So it was just kind of like after those six months, I just kind of was like, yeah, stick to sports. Um. <laughs> sports are fun. They're but like I think it's so <laughs> good because so many times people are like waiting for the like management position, right? Where it's like, try something. If you don't like it, learn something from it and then apply it later and i'm sure you probably had to have really hard conversations in some of those news spaces that i mean sports is a pretty place but there are some pretty tough conversations that go on have you ever had to have a really tough conversation or a tough interview around a topic that might not have been so you want a game more or less a this is what's going on behind the curtain yeah, so there was a um, there was a police chief in the town that I did news in, and his 
he had like a domestic violence situation. It was already out like on Twitter. Like I already saw like his mugshot posted from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so um, the person who was over our news, I want to say he was a news director, um, but he didn't want me to run the story. Like I had already written it and like kind of re- got some interviews from like some people around the town. They were like saying that he was, he, they were basically agreeing that he wasn't a good person. Um, and, but it was his personal friend. And so he did not want to run the story. And I kind of felt like that was conflict of interest. Like it doesn't matter that that's your friend, your friend should not have, I guess, done these things. You know, obviously everyone's innocent until proven guilty, but I felt like as a news person, that would have been my duty to run that story. But because he didn't want me to, I couldn't. So I didn't really like um, that. I just felt like it wasn't right um, to be told like, oh, you can't do that because it's my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That was a really hard conversation. I did rebuttal with him, but obviously it didn't get ran. Um, And I kind of just didn't really like that. after that. I was kind of like, well, if you're going to tell me what to write, then you might as well write it. What am I here for? I feel like a lot of writers have to feel like that sometimes of, you know what I mean? Like you, you're, Mm -hmm. you want to have free speech, but you're also guarded a little bit. And you're also like your job's on the line. Like just, it's what it is where it's like, either you get in line or we're going to find somebody to get in line. But I think it's a testament to like you and what you've developed Mm -hmm. and just your own character and drive is like, I believe this to be the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. not I'm being told this is the right thing to do. It's like in your own moral compass. And I think it's amazing to watch and see that mm-hmm. and see you flourish through it, but grow through that, right? It's not intimidating. You're like, okay, I can have that conversation and I can stand up. And even though I'm told no, I still stuck to my guns and did what I believed in, right? And that's not easy yeah. to do, especially with men in, in powerful places. And I think that that's why now, like, I do get nervous still. I do, like, always get butterflies or whatever. But I think that's kind of why I'm not, I'm less afraid to mess up now versus when I first started. Mm-hmm. I used to be, like, so worried about if, if people, what people are going to think, what are they going to say? And I think now I'm just kind of like, well, they're always going to say something. Yeah, of course. You can <laughs> never, it is never anything that's, like, right. Um, Sierra, I wanted to touch to... You worked for HBCU Go Sports, and I would love to hear about that experience. And then also on top of that, I feel like it's really important for us in this, you know, day and age to continue to, you know, shed light on the HBCU programs and everything. So I would love to kind of hear about that and how you think the HBCU programs can continue to grow in the future. My experience with them was great. Um, Just being able to travel around the country and seeing um, all the HBCUs. Like I said, I told you earlier, I never even knew what HBCU was when Mm -hmm. I got into college. So I went from not knowing anything about an HBCU to attending an HBCU to now working for a company that covered HBCU sports. And so it was, it was really great going to all of the schools. So there's like D3 schools, D2 schools Mm -hmm. that are also HBCUs. And they don't normally get a lot of coverage from anybody, you know, uh, because they're such smaller schools and they're not um, they don't have as much funding. So when we were coming to their school, they were very excited. And I felt it felt really good to be the person to tell their stories and be able to put them on that platform and talk about their games, call their games. Um, I think it's amazing what they're doing, you know, just bringing more light to it. And obviously with the NIL, it's helping all of the kids. And so mm-hmm. it's just kind of becoming a thing where now I think kids can actually go where um, they want to go versus where it'll it'll start getting equal to where they can start going to where they want to go versus where um, the funding or where the facilities are the nicest. I think it'll also get evened out eventually to where most schools have nice facilities. Most schools have up to date this or up to, you know, update. I think that it brought a lot of light to a lot of the HBCUs. Like, I don't know if you saw, like, the Bethune-Cookman thing that went viral last year where the, yeah. the helmets had, like, mold in them and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And mm-hmm. the, the athletes are sharing helmets. And, you know, that's not sanitary at all. So I think that what they're doing in HBCU sports, like, uh, visual-wise and making sure that they get covered is is really dope for those student athletes um, and those coaches and just the kids that go to those schools, too. It's bringing a lot of attention to them. 
I think it's great mm-hmm. to like see, especially like in, in the NBA side, we have an all star now. They're kind of growing and expanding NBA all star, and you see an HBCU game celebrated and played, and you even see you know athletes um, taking to supporting HBCU schools and athletes more and more. It's really fascinating for me to see how a community can be independent, but then through sports, they become connected. And you're really encouraging people. And we talk all the time about how sports and entertainment touches every single aspect all over the globe. Like it's honestly, it probably touches every single person, whether they realize it or not throughout the day. How do you balance being a woman in this industry and really taking up space in a room is what I like to say, um, of, of being prepared, but also just your opportunity to inspire the next you. Mm-hmm. It's tough being a woman in this space. And I don't want, and I still struggle with things because um, I'm a little hot headed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I'm with you. I feel the way and I have to think about it. And then I'm like, oh. you know, a lot of times you place yourself with biting your tongue because mm-hmm. um, a lot of things that someone would do or say to a woman, they wouldn't say to anybody else. And yep. so you're caught in the middle of reacting the way they want you to react or reacting the way you should react because you have more to lose than than those people who are obviously trying to treat you bad. You know, we're all in the same space. If, if I were to come into a room, I wouldn't treat you bad. I wouldn't treat you bad. But if there's someone who, you know, maybe is not having a great time in life or whatever the case may be, and they may treat you bad or say something rude, you know, it, it, it's a battle. You know, it, the right thing to always say is, hey, turn the other cheek, be, you know, but it's just hard. But, you know, you do actually have to turn the other cheek. Yeah. Um, I've been in situations where um, I didn't and my mouth got me in trouble. Um, so I think, like, it's just really hard for a woman. It's it's hard being a woman in this space. But it takes a lot of pride to be here, too. Mm-hmm. So I think that pride would um, cancel out the things that you might want to say that mm-hmm. you shouldn't say mm-hmm. Yeah. Times where you, you know, may want to react a certain way, but you can't. Um, I think that's the hardest point about being a woman in this space is is being, knowing that someone is doing something to you that they wouldn't do if you weren't a woman. Right. To your male counterpart. And I feel like Kate and I can relate to that so well. I mean, I know I've had many times where I've, but my tongue, like I wanted to like spark back or like kind of just, you know, some things that I don't think somebody would say to my male counterpart. And I think... I would love to hear kind of your advice, even Kate too, like what you guys would say to younger women who are like trying to like fight for a spot, you know, in whatever role they're going for, or if things like that happen and it's like, what do you do in those situations? Do you kind of speak up for yourself because you, you have to, or do you just kind of like pick your battles and let things kind of slide um, and just kind of, kind of be the bigger person? To be totally honest, um, if you're going to think of, if no one, if you're not actually harmed, I'm going to say this, if you're not actually harmed physically, um, I would say pick your battles because there has been times where I did have to bite my tongue in order to still receive an opportunity that I know that I needed in order to get out of there. And so mm-hmm. I did bite my tongue and re- and received that opportunity and then got out of there immediately, you know, Mm -hmm. like, Hey, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I'm not going to work for a company that allows, you know, me to be treated that way. I mean, the first step, obviously, if there's an HR or anybody that, you know, you could talk to about it and let know, you obviously let people know um, if they're not going to do anything, you know, you just balance it out for yourself. And that's me giving like, just honest, Mm -hmm. advice from experience um because a lot of people will say like no stand up for yourself and say this and say that and sometimes your voice might be so small and this is true like your voice could be so small that they will literally toss it to the side and just decide hey well I don't want to work we're just not going to get we're not going to return her next season we're not going to you know so sometimes you just got to pick your battles and um decide what's okay for you and what can be best for you 
And for me, I know at a time I was just like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and finish out this contract. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to like get out of here and never work for this place again. Um, (laughs) But I needed my demo (laughs) tape. Yeah. I mean, I think like it's so true, right? Mm -hmm. I think one thing that for me, um, as I try and grow and evolve in, in as a person and a professional is I try and give everybody a little bit of grace because we all get it wrong. Um, and I think for me, I try and say to myself, like, I don't like the way this makes me feel. Are they ready to hear and receive that information in this moment in time? Because sometimes what you might want to say can be better received in a different setting Mm -hmm. as opposed to like they say something and then you feel, obviously if you're disrespected, you're, you know, you're put in a place that you're uncomfortable, then you need to speak up. But I think part of that is just the growing process of like, I can't control other people. Mm -hmm. I can't control what they say. I can't control what they do. I can't control what they think about me as much as I would love to. It's just not possible. And I have found more success in being able to say to myself, okay, I don't like the way this made me feel. And I'm going to let them know that, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to let them know in a space that they're ready to receive it Mm -hmm. so that they can change it. So if someone says something and you're like, don't say that to me, like they're, they're not going to hear that. They're just going to be like, oh, you're, you're being a kind of way, right? Instead of like, hey, I want to talk to you about something that made me uncomfortable. And I just want to let you know how it came across. And I'm sure that wasn't your intention, right? I always find if I can take the high road and get them to see what they did probably had a would have had a better outcome had they changed the way they said it, their tone. Mm -hmm. It's going to hopefully change the way they approach it in the future instead of just being able to give them a reason to say, see, she's emotional. Mm -hmm. See, she's defensive. Oh, she, she's a girl, like whatever that is. Right. All of those things that come with it instead of (laughs) saying like, Hey, I'm a big girl. You, I get offended on the regular. (laughs) But I don't want someone else to have that experience that doesn't have the strength and confidence that I do because that could tear somebody down. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I'm not in the business of tearing people down. At Simply all. not. And if, if they don't change their behavior, that shows me who they are. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to limit my interactions with them. I'm not going to put myself in that setting. Killing people with kindness really works in this business. It's hard, girl. You were on this kill them with kindness, turn the other cheek. I'm like, yo, we're it's hard. Girl, though. When I want to say coming. something crazy, I just <laughs> like, laugh it off. Like that's how exactly. Like, oh, um, interesting. Oh, uh, remind me, <laughs> this is not what I want to sign up for again. But it's it's definitely hard because you do have to weigh where mm-hmm. you find your self worth. Yeah, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, if you don't feel like they value you the way you should be or you value yourself, then you got to make some changes. And that might mean missing out on things. But your overall mental and emotional health is going to be better mm-hmm. because you're in a setting that's allowing you to thrive. But I mean, Sierra, like you have a young daughter, too, right? Like I want to see things change beyond me. And that's part of why I'm so passionate about identifying ways to make it better because it's not going to change for me but it's going to change hopefully because of me Mm -hmm. and watching some men sometimes lean in becky bonner talked about this on our show about men having the opportunity to lean in and celebrate women and not being threatened by them is so important Mm -hmm. and there are men that do that and champion that and then that's that's changing the it's changing the dynamic in a room all of a sudden. Yeah. And it's okay to be a girl and it's okay to feel a kind of way. And these dudes are emotional too. Like, let's <laughs> see what it is. They're all fighting each other. They just don't want to say more mm-hmm. emotional for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what for you, as you look back on your career, what has been like a really high for you? And what has been a moment that you probably um, struggled in but got through? Um, A moment that was really high for me, honestly, I could say getting this position was a pretty high moment for me. Like I'm still floating on it like a month later. Uh, I I love my station. I love everybody I work with. Like it's literally Mm -hmm. like 
I haven't found anything to complain about just yet. <laughs> She's uh, got her notebook, though. No. She's like, no, I, I absolutely, that this is probably one of the, just because, like, you know, my daughter started school this year. It's kind of like I, I hit a milestone with my daughter. Um, she's starting school. I'm starting mm-hmm. this new journey. Um, mm-hmm. And I just, that just made me feel really good. Now, coming off of a really bad low, we'll talk about, um, I worked for a company where, I reported something um, about somebody who was considered somebody hired up there. And when I reported this thing about them, it was actually a sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I reported it, I didn't report it because I wanted to like get anybody in trouble. Right. Like I, I didn't want no smoke. You know, I just really wanted yeah. to be able to come to work and do my job. I didn't want to be have to be harassed every time I'm at work. Mm-hmm. So, um, the company didn't really care. They kind of valued this man more than they valued me. And this was a black man. And so for me, it made me feel even less than because I was like, well, gosh, like, you know, black people are in this space where we're supposed to be sticking together. And honestly, the person who does me the worst is the black man. Mm. And it, it made me, I was, I had, I didn't have the secret therapist um, because I was just in a position where I was like, well, Was I really qualified for the job in the first place? Am I good enough for the job? Or was he just trying to get what he wanted out of the situation? Um, And it kind of made me go through an imposter syndrome. I was depressed because things had happened because I did try to speak up for myself. Um, I was retaliated against. um, And it was just a really rough time for me. It was, I felt like, well, maybe I'm not supposed to be here. It made me kind of take a step back and kind of be like, hey, I don't know if I even want to do this anymore. And it was it was a low time. It was really low. But um, I could say a way I got out of that was I did, you know, I did get a therapist. In and she kind of told me that that was probably how important wow. is mental health for you i think you know we always talk about athletes and mental health and how important that is but you know we're all in a space right where we're experiencing some level um what they're going through and i think you're probably more heightened than than megan and i how do you balance the social media validation or backlash um based on your reporting or how you handle a story um and how do you protect yourself and your family as you go through that learning curve? Mm-hmm. Um, so literally in this position, I have gotten that more probably because I'm on TV more so every day versus once a week. Um, I made my, my Instagram private. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one thing. Um, even though that's the Instagram that I use for sports and stuff, I still make it private just because. Um, maybe I don't want to see all those. Maybe I don't want to see random people's comments that I that I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. I do see. I've seen like you know people email the station. They they hate how I say some of the school names or something. And stop it. That's a thing. Oh my god. Yes. Some of the viewers are so mad because I'm not saying <laughs> school name right, and I'm like, look, my bad that I'm not saying Schleiman Hanger right. Like I'm so <laughs> sorry. That's a weird name. So I'm so sorry, but. <laughs> Um, they would literally like email and be like, tell her to say the name right. She's such a disgrace. Oh, like, my God. literally, like, <laughs> no, people be better. Over- be better. <laughs> people be better. Mm-hmm. Like, some, uh, there was a viewer who complained about something I wore. I had on like a bodysuit, literally, kind of like what Megan has on. Yes, I um, have a bodysuit. And they were <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's giving tips. <laughs> they were like, they were like um, tell her to wear a shirt. What? But I guess my shirt was too fitted for them. Oh like, my I'm gosh. guessing. Oh. I think you know, yeah. it's funny because mm-hmm. it's um it's it's fascinating just to watch what people try and find. Mm-hmm. And they will find anything. And it's like you just have to be yourself. Like if you want to hate me because I'm wearing a skims bodysuit or you don't like <laughs> how my hair looks or I don't pronounce an A on the end of it, like that's a you thing, mm-hmm. not a me thing. And I'm not going to let your you thing affect me. So you learn to like realize, you know, like take keep that in the back of your head when you, you know, if you're dealing with comments, Instagram, because these people don't know you. Mm-hmm. They don't have anything. No, well, to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure, like, I, you know, if, if you're going to pick somebody down, like I just, you know, we had a guest, KJ, on. She's one of the hosts for um, 
the Memphis Grizzlies mm-hmm. and she did this amazing episode about how she started wearing like knee high boots and she thought that she was being a little like everyone was like oh my gosh is she being extras is it too scandalous like it made her question what she was comfortable in but then she actually began to change the wardrobe choices for other girls because mm-hmm. she was setting the tone and standard of like it's okay yeah, right. and so while it's really scary and icky at first you might be impacting people more positively than you think so don't let like the one person that feels the kind of way on a Mm -hmm. regular Tuesday (laughs) change who you are yeah because that's a them thing and that's I see these although I will say Sierra and Megan I do say this all the time is especially these young women like stage and age show up appropriately don't show up and give anybody a reason Mm -hmm. to use it against you you know what I mean? Like, don't try and be too much. Don't try and wear something that you're not comfortable in. And if you're not comfortable, then you probably shouldn't wear it. Right. So because then you're just giving, you know what I mean? And that's kind of mm-hmm. like my thing is like, if I just, I don't feel good in it. What is the, it's the Deion Sanders, like, look good, feel good, play good, pay good. Like, <laughs> yep. I literally oh, I, try and live by that. that. Like, <laughs> literally, <laughs> I'm gonna play my Cardi B and I'm gonna feel a kind of way when I walk <laughs> in this arena and don't care what everyone else thinks. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But it's but okay. Yeah. It's okay. And see, Megan, she likes your body suit. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I like your shirt too. But I, I feel the same way and it's hard, like, just being a woman and knowing, like, how to dress. Like, you know, you want to dress professionally but you also want to dress cute. And just finding that balance, I think, is what is really important. And you still want to look nice, as, like, Kate <laughs> talked about. Like, you want to be appropriate. Don't give them any reason to, like, call you out about what you're exactly. wearing. But I think also showcase and show like what you can wear and like this is a cute fit, you know, and I think that's um, so this important is for me. women. Yeah, that's what and I'm it's saying. who I like, am. If this is you, yeah. it's you. Like some people want to wear sweats and sneakers and some people want to wear heels and hot pink suits. Like, yeah. who am I to say that that's not for you? It's, mm-hmm. it's it, I'm here to celebrate other people. Like if <laughs> I, I, I try uh, every day to find one like random person. If I feel like if you look beautiful, I'm about to tell you. I want to be like, and it's funny because I catch myself not saying like, I love your sweater. I try and deepen it and say, you look very beautiful in that sweater, right? It's not the sweater that's beautiful. It's the person in the sweater. Like, yeah, it's you and the sweater. I love that. Nothing without you. I'm going to take that. But but it's it's, (laughs) you're changing someone's thought for the day. And it's like, perfect. And Mm -hmm. then it's going to come back. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. that good energy comes back and that love that you're putting out there in the world like it's going to come back and find you and <laughs> that's what I try and remind myself when you get the negative stuff right mm-hmm. it's like I don't ever wish ill on people but I hope what's for you finds you <laughs> in whatever way that is <laughs> yeah, take that however you want. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is well what would you say to the next year like what what should they do they want to you know they want to do sports casting they want to be on tv they want to you know report what's in the what for for sports how do they do that like what is the best place for them to start i would say starting um starting your own your own little project you know starting making a name for yourself i see there's some young girls that are like doing it at their high school now you know if you're Mm -hmm. in high school and you feel like this is already something that you're interested in start getting your tapes you know at the high school game at your high school games um just start start doing, don't wait for somebody to give you an opportunity. I would say that start, find the opportunity for yourself, make an opportunity for yourself. Um, just applying to stuff isn't enough. There's so many people that wanna do it. Just sending an email isn't enough. So I would say do everything it takes, go to the networking event, take the job that doesn't pay for, you know, this contract so that you can get close to these people or this people, do all of it, do it all. Do you have to be in sports to do your job? Like, do you have to be an athlete to do your job? I mean, I'm sure it's a benefit and it helps, but is it a requirement, do you feel like, for you? No, no, you do not have to. Would you have to? A lot of people think, too, that you have to be like a sports encyclopedia to work in sports. No, you really just have to be (laughs) investigating. And I think us as women are pretty good at that. Um, (laughs) Just good at covering. If you're a good reporter, I feel like any reporter could learn to be a sports reporter. So just mm-hmm. being good at your job, you know, and 
you'll know, obviously, if you're interested in this path of life, then you know what it takes to be a reporter. You have to be a good writer. You have to be um, pay attention to details and mm-hmm. things like that. But if you could do if you can report on anything, you can report on sports too. You have to have an understanding of sports, but I don't feel like it's, you have to learn, just learn sports just like you learn anything at any other job. Right. So, I have one last question for you. Do you feel like because you're a mom and you're a woman, it gives you an advantage um, from an approachability standpoint? I think sometimes we always knock women and it's harder for us, but I also think there is an avenue for us of the nurturing um mother side and the genuine care we have for people um, and our ability to connect with them as humans, less about as transactions or objects or assets, but just more on a human level. Do you feel like you have that advantage? I think so. I think that um, I have like the the connection to connect with athletes because I was an athlete and also just the mother, like a lot of the younger athletes that I know they call me mama C and I'm like mm. hey it's kind of I love that <laughs> that's cute I'm like it's kind of cute but it's making me feel kind of old but um <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they see me as somebody who is like nurturing to them so um, I definitely I get it I definitely appreciate it's that softer side right it's that less intimidating it's the softer side and you can use it to your advantage I find yeah. myself doing that often a lot um because you are so few and far between a woman in sports. Mm-hmm. I love it. You've been so amazing. I love it. I feel like I I literally feel I say this to Megan, like we're going to have to have like a little like getaway with everybody. Yes. I know. I, there's so much good energy between all of our guests, but also just the way I see everybody blazing paths and mm-hmm. like I, I now have on my list start an internship program. So thank you for adding to my like worldly to do that I need to catch up on and do. Oh, Y'all might need some interns, you know. <laughs> Listen, I always say all the time, like good people are hard to find. Mm-hmm. And so anytime I can find great people that want to learn, that's what life's all about. Because at the end of the day, this is cool, but we're just people down at the end of it. And, you know, you're chasing your daughter down the street just like everybody else to make sure they're on Halloween probably not eating too much candy. <laughs> exactly. You know, I had to hide all the candy so she doesn't get any cavities. <laughs> It's the tax. It's the mom tax. You know, we want we want the best for the people coming up. So um, yeah, I always am always open to any questions people have. I'm not one of those people who are going to hold it tight, secret, and not help you. Um, So yeah, if there's anybody Uh you know that ever needs help, I'm here. Where can we watch you? Tell us where can we tune in and watch you? Channel, station, time, all of this. I want to create yeah. this little positive fan base for you. <laughs> you, <bet. laughs> you can watch me Monday through Friday on K Texas Sports. It is um, an ABC affiliate. You might have to like Google it, but it's KTXS because if you're not in Abilene, it's not on your local station, but you can download the app. We do have an app you can download and you can watch there. Very cool. cool. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. You've been amazing. Yes, and I love uh, all the things you have coming up in your life and this big change. I can't wait to see in six months where you're at and what you're doing and how you're just continuing to change the world around you. I feel like everywhere you go, you're just changing the culture and people. And it's magical, magical to hear about and magical to watch. Megan, that was Honestly, one of my favorite interviews we've done to date. She is uh, an inspiring woman who is just blazing path. I mean, to start an internship that is now producing people that are colleagues with her and that work in the industry. It's amazing. All because she saw something that was missing and how she wanted to change it for somebody else. Like, yeah. What a trailblazer. Sierra is just wild. I loved having her on the show. I think something that was so cool, too, is that she created her own path and it's like she was comparing herself like okay it took her eight years to become a news director it took other people you know three years to become a news director but like you can't compare yourself to others and we kind of talked about it like trusting the process you're on your own journey and like also like never give up on like what you want to do and like your dream i mean she said that this was such a high in her life that's so exciting like i love that for her no, I think it's so powerful, too, how vulnerable she was. Yeah. Like, honestly, she kind of came to the table with, like, the real and the raw. And I think it's great for everybody to hear, like, the challenges that she went through because they ultimately shaped, like, who she's becoming. Oh, for sure. And it's fascinating to hear 
her big job, her dream job was in Abilene, Texas. I feel like so many people are like, it has to be New York or LA or Miami or Chicago. And really, she took a really powerful job at KTXS Mm -hmm. in Abilene, Texas. Right. West Texas. I know. I know. And it's not when you when you think about like what's my dream? I bet she didn't dream of Abilene, Texas. No. She I, dreamed of being a sports director. Yeah. Dude, that's, and her path took her to Abilene. It's impressive. Like I think that just speaks so much to who she is as a person. And we obviously heard like how strong of a woman she is. And I yeah. think it's so important. Like for me, like I don't have any kids and it's such an inspiration for me to see women like Sierra, women like you who have kids and are still going out and accomplishing yeah. their dreams. Like that's amazing. Well, I think it's really sweet. She she talked a lot about her daughter and her daughter started school and she mm-hmm. started a new job and how she's in a new space with her daughter, but they're both on experiencing new things, but on different paths and how she's created that connectivity. Mm-hmm. But I also loved how she talked about like her path to sports started because she was an athlete, mm-hmm. but she also tried other things. Right. And I think when we talk about like your path and your purpose, it's not necessarily like your what and your when, it's your why. And her passion is about sports and telling stories and sharing news. Yeah. And she experienced a lot of things she didn't like to be able to get where she is and take that opportunity away as a lesson instead of like a constriction on on where she was going. I love that. I think that's so important, too. And it's really cool that she tried other things like she learned, you know, she's in sports and then she's an athlete her whole life. She tried news because why not try news? See, it's not for her (laughs) and, you know, make the most of her experience while she's there, but then kind of go on back to following like what she really wants to do. So loved having her on. She was great. And I love the common thing we have of like mental health. Yeah. Because she is forward facing and not everybody on the show is in a forward facing spotlight, but we all have the same like imposter syndrome Mm -hmm. that I want to continue to break that barrier down and and listening to her talk about how she even still experiences it and she's on TV Mm -hmm. every day. And so it's not an easy thing to get through. So I want for all those young women to hear her talk about how she still challenges herself to get past it. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if you do. Exactly. Such an inspiration too. And I think it's something that, yeah, young women can look up to her and see um, that keep being you, keep being yourself and, you know, stay true to yourself too. That's just a big thing. So she had a lot of good advice to give to younger women. So she was amazing. For sure. I feel like she's impacting a lot of lives and she doesn't even realize it. I mean, look at us. We want to go to Abilene, Texas right now and go have oh, barbecue. Yeah. And go get barbecue. I've, yeah. Exa- exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if that's where we're at today, I love it. But she was a great guest. I'm so glad we had her on. You know, it continues to inspire me the amount of lives we're able to impact and reach through this show. That's it for us at Her Table this week. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to like, comment, and share her table to your friends and let us know who you want to have next. That's a wrap for us at her table. Thanks so much for joining. We'll see you guys next week on her table.